Hi, this is Mariah. Welcome to your Daily Mana Day 214. Today we're going to read Judges chapter 3. Now these are the nations that the Lord left to test Israel by them. That is, all in Israel who had not experienced all the wars in Canaan. It was only in order that the generations of the people of Israel might know war, to teach war to those who have not known it before. Because even if you're not looking for a fight, the fight will come looking for you. Remember, Satan is like a lion seeking whom he may devour. He hates people of all nationalities, of all religions and faiths. He wants them all killed. And even if you're not looking for a fight, he will find an excuse to stir up someone to hate you to come kill you. That's what happened to Lashem. The Danites came. People were unsuspecting, powerless, had no way to defend themselves when they were attacked. And God doesn't want to leave us vulnerable. He wants to help prepare us because Lucifer is like a lion seeking whom he may devour. These are the nations, the five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites who lived on Mount Lebanon. From Mount Baal Hermon as far as Lebo Hamath. They were for the testing of Israel to know whether Israel would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So the people of Israel lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And their daughters they took to themselves for wives, and their own daughters they gave to their sons, and they served their gods. Now humans are sexual creatures. Satan knows this. It's very easy for him to uh, entice people to false religions using sex. In fact, some of the women who worship Baal and or Molech would get pregnant on purpose just so they could sacrifice the child to that deity. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth. Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the people of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the people of Israel, who saved them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord gave Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim. So the land had rest forty years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. And the people of Israel did again what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered himself, the Ammonites, and the Amalekites, and went and defeated Israel. And they took possession of the city of Palms. And the people of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and the Lord raised up for them a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite, a left-handed man. The people of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. And Ehud made for himself a sword with two edges, a cubit in length, and he bound it on his right thigh under his clothes. And he presented the tribute to Eglon the king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who carried the tribute. But he himself turned back at the idols near Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he commanded, Silence! And all his attendants went out hit from his presence. And Ehud came to him as he was sitting alone in his cool roof chamber. And Ehud said, I have a message from God for you. And he arose from his seat. And Ehud reached with his left hand, took the sword from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. And the hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not pull the sword out of his belly and the dung came out. Then Ehud went into the porch and closed the doors of the roof chamber behind him and locked them. When he had gone, the servants came, and when they saw the doors of the roof chamber were locked, they thought, Surely 
He's relieving himself in the closet of the roof chamber. And they waited until they were embarrassed. But when he did not open the doors of the roof chamber, they took the key and opened them, and there lay their lord dead on the floor. Ehud escaped while they delayed, and he passed beyond the idols and escaped to Syrah. When he arrived, he sounded the trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim. Then the people of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he was their leader. And he said to them, Follow after me, for the Lord has given your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. So they went down after him and seized the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites, and did not allow anyone to pass over. And they killed at that time about 10,000 of the Moabites, all strong, able-bodied men, not a man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest 80 years. Ooh, twice as long. After him was Shabgar, son of Anam, who killed 600 of the Philistines with an ox goat. And he also saved Israel. That reminds me of another judge you're going to read about, Samson, who found the jawbone of a donkey laying on the ground and used that to kill a whole bunch of Philistines. So anyways, that was our reading of Judges chapter 3. So we can see that um, sometimes fighting is necessary. You know, even if you're not the one instigating the aggression, if you were a child of God, there are enemies. Most of them are spiritual, in, you know, demonic forces that stir people up to try to come against you. And even if you're not looking for a fight, the fight will come to you. If you're living a life that honors God and glorifies Him, the enemy can't stand that. You will be attacked. Don't blend in with the world. The world is perishing. And Israel is learning this. Well, they're having, they're trying to. It's it's difficult. It's not easy to follow the Lord. Um, our nature is to maintain control, but that never works out. So anyways, for tomorrow, we're going to read about Deborah and Barak. And that'll be for tomorrow. So for now, I just want to say thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Stay humble and true to the faith. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.